Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming today. Uh, today, Jia and I will share uh, what we have been working on during the past year. A work that we think might be beneficial to those companies who uh, use Lambda as their data processing architecture and uh, probably uh, made a similar problem uh, uh, as, as we had. I am a vision, currently the a senior director at Origin Financial. Uh, before I worked for Intel uh, for many years, uh, majorly focusing on uh, big data uh, technology ecosystem. Jar is the uh, co-founder of Stream Native. He is also the PMC member of Apache PowerSA and Apache Bookkeeper. And I'm glad to have Jia with me today. Okay, today uh, I will first briefly introduce the background of uh, this topic. Uh, I will share the uh, data processing architecture uh, and the problem we had. And after that, Jia will give us a deep dive introduction about Apache Pausa and how we work together to uh, solve the problem we had. Okay, uh, the internet has been growing at a staggering rate in the past decades. And the number of uh, mobile e connections in use has reached 10 billion, according to uh, GSMA intelligence data. China is currently the largest mobile payment market on earth, and it's still growing. The number of mobile uh, payment users uh, was around three, uh, 300 million in 2015. Uh, by the end of March 2020, the number is now uh, 765 million. On the other hand, uh, uh, we can also see a rapid growth in terms of the uh, mobile payment transaction volume. During the past five years, the total volume of mobile payment transaction in China was almost uh, uh, triple up, uh, reaching uh, 45 uh, trillion US dollar a year. In China, uh, there are more and more economic activities that can be carried out through mobile payment, and people are less likely to uh, carry cash or credit card with them. Uh, mobile payment are, has been so successful in China because uh, they are fast and straightforward. Uh, the table shown on, on your left hand side of the screen says that mobile payment is almost everywhere in people's daily lives in China. Uh, you can order the food uh, uh, call a taxi or uh, take the metro uh, by clothes, uh, coffee, almost everything on your smartphone. Uh, with either a QR code, uh, NFT touch, or even just simply uh, by showing your face, the transaction will be completed in a blink of eye. My current company, Origin Financial, aka uh, China Telecom Best Pay uh, is a financial service company supporting uh, more than five, 500 million users with services we just saw in transportation, e-commerce, uh, retail, and its chatless. To provide our user with 24-7 uh, a secure, fast, and convenient payment services, there are many challenges to our uh, data platform. Our peak transaction will re could reach uh, more than 50 million transactions with 1 billion events a day. And um, uh, for many, for many our uh, scenario like um, uh, fraud detection or online recommender system, they, they, uh, they demand a instant response 
and uh, for for those scenario, they heavily rely on the real time risk factor or features to be computed before feeding them into a uh, decision engine or a machine learning model. Uh, most of those uh, most of those factors or features are combinations of uh, results from a his, uh, uh, histo historical data and uh, instant data computation. So we have a huge number of batch and streaming jobs running all the time. Okay, uh, for example, uh, in, in, in our uh, fraud detection system, uh, we might check the uh, geographic coordinates behind a user's recent logins. If the geographic coordinates are exactly the same, the transaction is quite suspicious. It's probably a bot or simulator rather than a real user. Another example I show in, uh, I show in here on the screen is um, uh, what we use when we, we want to decide uh, whether we, 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 could, we should send some user some gift or coupon to boost its uh, activity. Okay. Uh, to do that, we made certain rules. One of the rules goes like the number of the user's total transaction made within the past half years, and including the current transaction. Okay, for this particular feature, we need to compute the number of transactions the user made uh, in the past 180 days, and the number of the transactions made today and return the combined result within milliseconds. Behind uh, is a typical Lambda architecture supporting the, uh, our data processing uh, pipeline before. Lambda architecture has three layers, as you may already know that. Uh, it has batch layer, uh, a streaming layer, and a serving layer. The batch layer is normally for historical data computation. The data is normally stored in Hive and Spark is uh, dominating as a um, batch computation engine nowadays. Uh, the streaming layer is for real-time uh, computation with Freak as computing engine. Consuming data persisted normally now in, in Kafka and serving layer gets the final result for serving. Lambda is uh, widely used in the industry. Uh, it's effective and a good balance of speed and uh, reliability. But um, it also has several problems in our practice. First, it's, it's complexity. As we can see, we need we need to maintain uh, three different software stacks, batch layer, streaming layer, and serving layer, which means we have to maintain multiple uh, clusters, uh, being Kafka, Hive, uh, Spark, Flink, and et cetera. And it also means we need to have a diverse uh, engineering team with uh, different skill sets. Second, we have to split the logic uh, into many segments which make us very difficult to uh, maintain. The last is the uh, data uh, redundancy. Multiple duplication need to be uh, moved over different clusters for processing. With this province, we have been searching for alternatives and uh, we met Pausa years ago. With Pausa, we made a bold attempt to reflect the software stack our goal is simply to simplify the software stack and lift up our uh, work efficiency, and if even better, to lower the cost at the same time. Okay, now I will give the stage to Jack to share what is Pausa and how it helps to reach our goal. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Jack from Stimulative. It is a great pleasure to attend the first Pasa Summit. And uh, thanks a lot for visitor sharing and the background introduction. 
I just uh, mentioned mentioned Lambda architecture does not work very well for the new requirement. And uh, that's why we work with the best pay together to integration parser with Spark to have a unified data processing framework. And uh, before we get into the details, I would like to first introduce a little our Apache parser. And uh, what is Apache parser? We usually introduce Apache parser by these sentences, a flexible pop-up messaging backed by a durable log storage. The first sentence in the parser is a pop-up system, similar like Kafka or ZBMQ. And uh, the second sentence is identify the core difference of Apache parser. It is not just a message system. It is a compilation of the storage system and the message system. Here is a brief structure of Apache parser. As you can see, it is multi-layered. The first layer is a broker. It mainly support the message producing and receiving. And, uh, the, and the second layer is a durable, log, durable storage layer. It leverages another project called Apache Bookkeeper. And uh, use Bookkeeper as a distributed and shared log storage system. Bookkeeper use a quorum way for the consensus. So every node has a equal permission and no slave master concept is involved here. This makes Bookkeeper more easy to support high availability. And uh, by this layered architecture, the broker do not store any data and only keep data in Bookkeeper. Broker itself could be very lightweight. It is stateless. It uh, could be a stateless component and you can, spare, you can scale out broker, use any container technology. This, is, this brings many benefits from this architecture. Uh, first is the independent scale. And uh, if you want to support more producer and consumer, you only need to add more broker node. And if you want to store more messages, you could only choose to add more storage nodes. And the second benefit is uh, low fare over time. And uh, since no data is stored in broker, so when the broker crash, it uh, only needs to transfer the ownership of the topic from the broker down, from the, bro from, from the crash the broker to another broker. This way, the fare over time could be reduced to less, less than a minute. And the third is the expand, expand, expand of storage. Unlike our, unlike our system, it will no need to wait for the data rebalance since the copy of data of several node in the storage node is in incorporation. And that's the three main benefit for this architecture. And that's why we call, and that's also why we call PASA a cloud native. And uh, another fundamental architecture difference is that PASA has a segment-centric storage. PASA uses topic partition as a basic concept, like other systems. But the partition in PASA is a logic concept. Partition is not banned with any broker. It has been divided into segments. And uh, each segment is cut as user defined size or time. For example, one gigabyte or one hour. At the time of each segment is created, it will select which node will be best for the storage. So as shown you as shown you as shown in this picture, the segment could be evenly stored across all the storage nodes. And uh, each segment is uh, larger in each segment is called ledger in the bookkeeper. It only has a single writer, which is the owner or broker. And it writes in append-only mode. And the bookkeeper will hand all the data is replicated in the storage nodes. So for short, PASA has a layer architecture 
and has its own segment centric storage architecture. This architecture brings in several benefits for the unified data processing. And uh, in the following slides, I will walk you through it. This slide shows the user interface of Apache Parsa. As you can see, Parsa has a very similar concept as other systems. It has, it has topic as the entity for message storage and the producer send messages to the topic and the consumer receive messages from the topic. Also, same as other system, each topic can contain several partitions inside. And uh, as we discussed before, each partition is a logical concept and physically each partition is divided into multiple segments. And uh, once segment reach the user defined time or size, it is sealed and the new segment is created. So if we take one partition as an example, we could treat it as a stream. The old segments are sealed and read only, and the new segment is, append, is in append only mode. The new data is added at the end of the latest segment. If we take a more close look into the partition and the segments, we could find that it is very smooth for us to move the old data into the second storage because it is in a unit of segment. And then we could logically support the infinite stream storage. That's why we built a tiered storage feature at a very early time. And based on this architecture, for the latest data, it is catched in your broker. It will bring you much low latency. And for the warm data, it is stored, it is stored in the storage layer, which is in the bookkeeper. And for the cold data, it will be automatically uploaded into the tiered storage, like S3 or HDFS. And with this architecture, the application, with with this architecture, the application for application, it brings in a unified view of your data. You don't need to take care where it is stored, either it's in broker or in bookie or in Azure, because the data format is in the same. You could easily handle all the data by only one catalog or one metadata system for all your data, all your topic. That means your message queue and other data processing framework could share the same view of the data. And uh, by this way, we could leverage the multi-layer architecture for Parsa to provide uh, two-level data API. One is the streaming way for consuming data through pops up. Another way is to use segment reader to read the uh, segment data from bookkeeper or tiered storage directly. The segment reader the segment reader API provides a way to read each segment in parallel. It is similar to the batch processing in HDFS, where you can divide the file into several blocks. And the map reduce job could read each file blocks in parallel. It is the same as how we handle the, the partition and segment. That is the fundamental that how Parsa provides for the unified processing stack. And by Parsa, you don't need to process data into different systems. And then change the data together. Parsa is a unified data source, data store. And uh, as we just mentioned, Parsa provides two kinds of API, which has their own benefits. The first pops up is the many focus on the latency. So it's read directly from, from broker. And uh, also it uh, have several convenient APIs like uh, consume, seek, and receive. It also provides several sub mode like uh, failover, shared, and key shared. And by this different sub mode, PASA could uh, provide a unified queue mode or streaming mode for user interface. 
and the second reader interface is more focused on the batch. It reads directly from storage layer, and uh, by this way, it could get better parallelism. And also, it can use publish time as a predicate push down to make the query more efficient. With this, with the principle of with the principle of stream as a unified view on the data, all the data process can be treated in two ways. Uh, like we could uh, read data with boundary or without, or without boundary. Where well, with the boundary or with the boundary, it is a bounded stream, so it has the end, uh, it has start time and end, and end time. It usually means that it usually means read a hist historical data. The, by this way, the stream could be divided into several segments, and each segment could be read in parallel by, by our segment reader. And uh, the, the other way is if you're running a stream query for a for, for in a continuous way, it is more of using it is more using a streaming mode. Uh, and by the streaming mode, it keep reading the latest data from the streams. So it more relies on the pops up on the pops up API. For the streaming mode, pops up API provides low latency, where the segment reader API provides more parallelism. This is the vision that how pops up this is the vision that how pops up provides, as you can see. Uh, PASA provides a unified view of data for the unified data processing. This is the fundamental work that we could. This is the fundamental that we could uh, based to that we could based on to provide the uh, unified data processing. And uh, based on this, we we have a second version of the architecture. As you can see, it reduced the components involved in the data processing stack. And uh, all the data is stored in the PASA and no matter the historical of all the streaming data. And also now the query engine and the computing engine are all unified into Spark, uh, in which the Spark structure streaming is used for the streaming processing and the Spark circle is used for the batching processing. And the API is also unified because since the since the Spark structure streaming and the Spark circle has the same unified API. And in this architecture, by using PASA and Spark, we could achieve we could achieve the unified data processing stack. And we use PASA as a as a single source of storage, and use Spark as a single unified computing engine. To make PASA and Spark work together, we built a project called PASA Spark. And this project is deeply integrated with PASA schema, because only with schema, the message in PASA could be used in a structured way, and the user could know all the fields of the data. And also by the schema, we could uh, use PASA topics as uh, structured uh, streams. With with the work in with the work in PASA Spark, we provide a PASA connector for both for both Spark structure streaming and Spark circle. And uh, this project uh, has already been open sourced in Streamlit use GitHub repo. You could access this. You could access the. You could access this link for to get more details. And uh, in the following slides, let's see how PASA works with the Spark, with Spark structure streaming and Spark circle. Um, this slide provides two examples of how PASA Spark to do the streaming query. The first example is a query from multiple PASA topics. And uh, as you can see, at first, we will prepare a data frame with the format of PASA. And besides this, we will provide where the PASA service is, the PASA service URL and the admin URL. 
And at last, we will, we will provide the topics that uh, this data frame is subscribed to. As in this example, we provide two topics, topic one and topic two. And uh, after preparing the data frame, we could uh, use, uh, we could do a query through the, through, through the data frame. And the second example is similar to the first one, except uh, Except in the first example, it uh, subscribed two topics, and in the second example, we subscribe to a pattern of topics, and all the topics that match this pattern will be included and be queried by the following by the following circle. And this slide then and this slide provide another example of how to use Pata's bug to do a circle query. As we just mentioned, the circle, the circle query and the, the spark and the streaming query, the difference is that the circle query is a bounded stream, so it will so it will contain a start offset and end offset. And besides this, it is almost the same as a streaming query. So as a difference, we will first provide the start and end offset of the boundary. The offset is a map of topics and uh, and the message and the and the message ID of which uh, and the message ID in the topic that it starts. And then we also prepare a data frame. And once the data frame once the data frame is prepared, we could uh, do a circle with it. Uh, not also with the query, we could also we could also write the query query request into the path of topics. The first example we identify the topic name. We provide a topic name for the for the search result to be written in. And uh, where in the second example the topic name is provided by is provided in the data result itself and some some field of the some field of the top of the query data contains the target topic name that uh, the result will be written in. And, and uh, as you could say, the use, the, use, the, the use of Spark, of Spark Parser is very simple. And uh, in the POC, at best pay, it uh, includes two parts. The first part is uh, ingestion data into Parser. And uh, for the real-time data, it is, it is originally stored in Kafka. We need to provide a way to read Kafka data for, to read the Kafka data out and write it into Parser. So we provide a Parser IO Kafka. It reads out the Kafka message as JSON format and then store the data as other format into Parser. And for the HTTP, Historical data, it is originally stored in the have, and uh, since Spark already support query have table, so it is easier. We only need to use Spark to query the have table, and uh, insert the and insert the query result of have rules as parser messages. And uh, after the data is injected into parser, we could use the Spark structure streaming for the stream process and the Spark circle for the interactive query. And uh, by this way, it uh, brings several benefits for it, uh, it, uh, it, get, it could get several benefits. Uh, the first is uh, complicity in sort uh, a third. This is mostly because uh, the architecture is more unified. And uh, the class number, as you can see, is swapped from swapped from six down to four. And the second is uh, storage storage saving swapped a little. This is because we don't need to store two copies of data for both the streaming and historical. We have a unified storage. And the third is the time of production improved a lot. This is this is because the unified architecture is more simple and uh, it brings more efficient for the data scientist. And then, at last, it brings in higher stability for the, 
because the less component used and the simple unified and simple unified storage and processing data API is used. And then uh, there is, uh, though this framework brings in a lot of benefit, there is still a lot of work that we could do to improve it. Uh, the first is the event time index, as, in, as a lot of query is based on the event time window in Spark. So we, could, we would like to make query more efficient by providing this, so we could, so we could, uh, by this by this event time index, we could do the query more efficient. And then the second in, the second index on stream is important. This would improve certain queries of the system. Also, the clone loader is a big requirement. Um, currently, uh, when the topic is, when, when the topic segment loaded from parser into the tier storage, it is in it is stored in the zoo format. It's not efficient for the storage, for storage and query. And uh, by the clone order, by the clone loader work, we could uh, provide a schema aware clone loader mechanism, and uh, and uh, it would, uh, and uh, and by this way, it will be it will be more efficient for the storage and query. And uh, this work is almost finished and uh, it will be open sourced in one or two months. Um, so do a summary of our, so, so here is a summary of this talk. And uh, Apache Parser is a collaborative message streaming system because it has a multi-layered architecture, also combined with a segment since segment-centric storage architecture. And also by the layered architecture, we could provide two level of reading API. The PubSub API is very suitable for the streaming and the segment reader API is very suitable for the batching and for the, for the batching and the historical, and the historical data query. And since PubSub provides a unified view of data, we could use Pasa Spark project to do to provide a simple unified data processing. And uh, besides, and here is some reference for the for for this work. The Pasa IO Kafka. It is a project to ingest data from Kafka to Pasa, and uh, Pasa Spark. This project contains the main work. It uh, where it where it uh, support it uh, it supports Spark to use Parser as a connector for both the Spark for, for both Spark structure streaming and Spark circle. And also there is an article for more details of this of this work. You could uh, get it from from our medium. From a, for our medium medium account, and uh, at last we and uh, and at last uh, here is uh, some ways here is some ways that uh, we could use to contend to the community, and uh, we have a Pasa website and also Twitter of Apache Pasa and Submitive, and also the Slack, and also there is a Slack link which user could use to, to do a self-registry. And uh, the parser also provides a many list of, de of developer and user, and also the GitHub repo and uh, our medium. Welcome to subscribe and uh, get more updates for Apache Parser. Okay, uh, that's all for this talk. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching.